Greetings, uh, out here today with the ducks and geese. And I have this here file with me. It's been put to service for the last two years and this morning it finally stopped cutting. So I'm gonna show you how to make a handy dandy tool. It's called uh, a brooch. I'm gonna use it to cut away the, the wood inside of a handle from for other tools that I use so I needed one of those and I heard someone tell me well I didn't hear it someone wrote to me and said that they couldn't figure out how to do it I told him just drill a pilot hole and then use a brooch and dig it out put the handle in and they told me they couldn't afford a brooch and I decided well here's a simple way to do it so uh what we're going to do is I'm going to heat this up, hopefully melt the melt the glue that's in here, pull that handle off. Then I'm going to heat it until it glows and stab it inside of a bucket full of ash to anneal it. And then we're going to get to work with a grinder or saw, whatever you, whatever you have handy. But you're going to need a triangle file, you're going to need some sort of thing to cut it with, and you're going to need a way to heat treat it. Anyhow, let's get to work. Alright, this is just starting to heat up now, so we just started the bugger. What we'll do is we'll just throw this file right on here. And then once the steel gets hot, we should be able to slip this handle right off after I melt all the epoxy. This isn't the original handle to this file. Uh, I glued it on like a fool, thinking it would be better that way. Oh well, live and learn. Alright. Nothing to it but to do it. Gotta heat that until it's good and hot, and then we'll uh, toss in a bucket of ash. We're going to turn on the grinder and I'm just going to grind some of these teeth down, make it a little bit smoother so I can write on it with a pen. And uh, once it's written on, I will do a cut because what I'm going to do is probably cut this not quite in half down here, give myself maybe three eighths of an inch on the edge up and then maybe for four or five inches cut across. And then I'll just hand file in the teeth and should be good to go harden it and get ready to use it but uh, right now we're gonna grind simple simple pimple yeah see smooth it right out what's really nice is this will be nice and smooth but it still have a nice enough texture that I could probably forge this down or just grind it into to another tool later on. The leftover bit. Yeah. So that texture will stick. That look will stick right in there. I mean it still it still catches just a little bit. 
but not too much. I like it. I like the way it looks. So when I, I could probably forge this into, you know, another little tiny work knife or a carving knife even, and still have some of that indentation, make it look kind of neat. This little bend right here, that warp, I could straighten that right out when I go to heat, heat treat it. Because I'm going to have to heat treat again because now it's fully annealed, fully soft. So I'll just straighten it on my anvil, let it cool once, heat it up to critical, and then punch it. And it should be good to go, just like it was. Now we're going to do the edges. Alright, so that's all there's to it for the first grind because all we're doing is getting knocking some of those teeth down, right? So now it's nice and smooth. Uh, still really nice, sharp, hard corners, so that'll help me later on. Now all I have to do is mark out where I want to cut it, get the angle grinder out. You can use any kind of thing that will cut steel, but I like to use an angle grinder because I'm lazy but a hacksaw would work for, for sure. Um, but other than that, um, I don't know. I'm gonna go get the grinder and maybe wait for a little bit more daylight and then get right to it. <laughs> took the liberty to start some of the filing. This is the bottom part is how it's going to end up looking. You see the crisscross patterns there in the center. They'll give it a nice kind of point to drag the wood out of the handle when I'm doing the uh, broaching. Um, and all I have to do is just finish going at this angle up here all the way up to the rest of the, the length of this and shouldn't take me too long. I mean, I did all this uh, this morning whilst I was uh, helping the kids out with their technology for school. Um, but now I'm gonna you come out here, I'm gonna show you how you do it. You can, you can just hand, hand hold this and file it, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. I mean, it can be done. I mean, I, I've done it multiple times but I found that using a vise is easier. And you don't need any expensive vise. I use uh, just a cheapo that I picked up for holding on to uh, some leather work while I'm trying to stitch it. But anyway, uh, let's get this going. Now the most important thing is you wanna have this part kind of perpendicular to the steel. All right, so when you push it, it has a nice angle. You don't want it to. Uh, you don't want it to go straight up and down because you want to have this angled backward. I mean, the angle. You want to have that ramp to pull the pull the wood dust out. But anyway, we're gonna go up the rest. There we go. Start with the line. See, they give you the line, and now you're just gonna take it, do the rest. All right, 
that's one side done now what I'm gonna do is just do the cross sections and we're done so I might um, well, I'll show you how to do the cross section like one or two cross sections then I'm just gonna turn off the camera because this is boring stuff right let's see what we got here and the same principle applies here you want this to go flat right there well that one didn't work out anyway how I wanted Oh, that's right, I've been doing them wrong. Damn it. You bastard. Well. There we go. Well, despite those, despite these mess ups right here, this will still work very well because it'll still grab a lot of wood. I mean, that's really sharp there. I mean, those are the sharpest ones yet. So, don't listen to, to me ever again. My angles were all messed up. What a, what a dolt. Alright, well you get the point. I'm going to do the last few and then I'll get you back. Alright, there we have it. Um, that's how we want it to end up looking when I have it crisscrossed. Up here, I don't know what my deal was. Uh, not much I can do to... well... I'm gonna try to fix it, but I'm not gonna make you watch that. But this part right here, that's what's that's right. This is wrong. Oh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> what a dope. Anyway, there we go. That's my that's my brooch. And when this is uh, when this is dull, I'll use it for a pumpkin carver. But right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sanding belt. I'm going to taper this down to a little bit more of a fine point and then I'm going to straighten it and harden it. Maybe I'll bring you back when I do the hardening. Alright, let's get to it. So we're going to check the hardness. Doesn't bite at all. See, so it's the same file we just used to to uh, do all the teeth with. Kind of neat. And it's still using the handle it came off of. So... There we go. See, you see that? Yeah. 
it's not too bad. Stuff is a always a pain right in the butt. But I think this will do the trick. Yeah. Just gotta take my time with it. All right, well, there we have it. That's our handle brooch. Uh, and when it gets dull, eventually, because it, it, it'll have to eventually, I'll uh, turn it into, uh, well, I'll use it as a pumpkin carver. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, thanks for watching. And I hope you guys go out and have a great day. Maybe make something of your own.